Scream 3 is based around Stab 3, the making of Stab 3. And Stab 3 is sort of um, Scream 2 and Scream 1, like in a nutshell. They're, they've made the sequels, and this is a sequel to those sequels. So it's movies inside movies. So there's a lot of stuff surrounding Hollywood and the industry, and filmmaking, and actors, and producers, and all that fun stuff. Stuff starts to go wrong. Things are happening. People are, you know, getting outed. <laughs> and um, we all come in together and we, we're, we're there to help. Bye. All right, I got an idea. Well, I'm going to hook up with you guys later. You want us to come with you? Oh, we're better alone. We've really tried to keep the characters strong and obviously we've all grown in different ways and, and become different people, but there's still these characters that people love. And there's new people who are fun, too. True to the screen spirit, the latest chapters send some recognizable faces in harm's way, including former teen star Patrick Dempsey. All bets are off. Did you request this case? And you see what I see day in and day out. The violence that people do to each other. You get haunted. What do you mean? I know what it's like to see ghosts that don't go away be watching a scary movie in your head whether you want to or not i played detective mark kincaid who was basically trying to find the killer i can handle fans you see this do we i haven't had one of these in a year and a half someone's gonna pay for this jennifer settle down what happened i'm with him you like i'm ever going to win an award playing you there's been a second murder where where nancy drew wants to know where i play jennifer jolie who is been in the two stab movies and he's been acting as Gail Weathers for two films. So in this film, I get to meet, I get to meet her. But it wasn't exactly love at first sight for these dueling Gales. You know, I'm sorry things didn't work out in 60 minutes too, but total entertainment, that's a pretty good fallback. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry that things didn't work out with Brad Pitt, but being single, that's a pretty good fallback. She was a great Gail Weathers. I had such a, I had such a good time working with her. I think when I heard that Parker Posey was playing me as Gail Weathers, I, there isn't a better person to play that part. It's perfect. Don't you get it? Someone's killing them in the order they die in the movie. Dewey, who gets killed third? Who gets killed third? All this mayhem doesn't sit well with Scott Foley, who plays the director of Stab 3. After all, he's got a film to finish. Why Why couldn't someone have killed the cast from Stab 1? Huh? Or Stab 2? Why me? What? John, what did we do wrong? Hollywood is full of criminals whose careers are flourishing. I'm not a... Roman Bridger. He was a uh, first-time feature film director. Um, you know, he was directing music videos and commercials, but, uh, you know, he wanted his big break, and he got it. Um, well, he was having a tough time. Everyone's dying. Ronan? They have three. Jesus, I gotta get a new agent. In real life, actress Jenny McCarthy was thrilled to be part of the show. You know, watching the first two, I always thought, you know, it was missing something, you know. And so I definitely made sure that I got in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, my man. He does good work, huh? What the hell? Sarah Darling, the actress in Stab 3, which is the movie within the movie, um, she's kind of the anti-bimbo bimbo. She's trying very hard to get a lead. She wants respect. I'm not happy that I'm 35 playing a 21-year-old. I'm not happy that I have to die naked. And I'm not happy that my character is too stupid to have a gun in the house after her boyfriend's been cut into fish sticks. Went through it myself. Okay, so um, yeah, I mean, when I started, it was tough getting, you know, good scripts. If I saw the Kimmy Car Wash again, I was going to die. It was, I was having enough of that. She's very, very bright and has a wicked sense of humor. So, uh, she came in and really took the crew by storm. Thank you for calling Sunrise Studios. If you'd like to get a copy of press 1. Coming up, get inside the real-life love story that made Scream a dream for two of its stars. Plus, we'll reveal the security measures that had the stars scared stiff.
I was scared for my own life. <laughs> but first, another BTS IQ test. Name the starlet who took flight off a balcony to her death in Scream 2. David Arquette has the answer next. Set, ready, and act. Okay, Screamers, here's David Arquette with the answer to our second BTS IQ test. Which WB star took a nasty fall in Scream 2? The answer to trivia question number two is Sarah Michelle Gellar from the WB show. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Backup. I was in the original film Buffy the Vampire Slayer <laughs> without Sarah Michelle Gellar. She was just a little pot back then. I'm headed to the crime scene. Stay by Jennifer's side. I suggest a search of the ground. A hey, dewdrop. Have a word. Just so it can be straight. I'm a professional celebrity guard here. Uh, my resume lists Julia Roberts, Simon Rushdie, Posh Spice. You are the Hollywood a hanger on her. Deputy Dewey may be a hanger on in Scream 3, but there were no stragglers allowed to hang around the set, not after the director's alarming experience. Beginning with Scream 2, we had this uh, kind of frightening thing happen of um, the first 30 pages were sent to us by the writer, Kevin Williamson, and that evening they appeared full-blown, in format, on the internet. And uh, we just couldn't believe our eyes. No, none of us to this day have an idea of how it happened. This time, Craven and company made secrecy a top priority, and that meant keeping some cast members in the dark. Basically, I got my pages for the scene I was shooting the next day, only the night before, and sometimes the day of. I would get uh, the scenes for, for the day I was shooting, either that day or the night before. Um, so if it was that day, memorizing was a pain in my butt. Um, but even even still, you know, I would get it, and they would be so hard to read because in the middle of the page would be a big maroon stripe, uh, special paper that couldn't be Xerox. But one star was hip to the director's method. I knew, but um, just because I was in the first two, so they kind of let us know stuff. But a lot of people didn't know. A lot of people, a lot of the crew members didn't know. Sometimes I would spill the beans. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. Because of the high level of security around the lot, cast members had to be screened to see Scream 3. I walked in. I was like, hey, I just want to see the movie. They're like, you can't go in. And one lady said, he's in the movie. But if it wasn't for that, I mean, there was no way. There was like three chicks lined up. You had to like meet each one of them and tell them your mom's name and show them like a driver's license. Well, it took me a sign that, you know, the curiosity level was at extraordinary height. So, you know, in the long run, when it's finally released, that all goes well for your film doing well. But the passions surrounding Scream aren't limited to the fans. The chemistry between Courtney Cox and David Arquette was evident in the original Scream, but they needed a little help getting together. It's a weird combination. Yeah. I mean, David's kind of a wild man, and Courtney's very sort of straight and, you know, control freak. And, uh, but the funny thing, and the fun thing is that they kind of have balanced each other out and rounded off each other's edges in a really great way. I always say to people, oh, wow, what's that media period? How long is that? Because I don't know if it's like a month, two months. I think it's a year. So I do, but I really feel like I'm with my soulmate. He's like, I guess I'm a newlywed, but I feel like I'm, um, I feel like I'm married forever to my best friend. The fact that I met my wife, and I don't know, I can't, I can't go a day without being thankful for that. And, um, and Wes also was really instrumental in helping us make it work. He, He'd known we'd been going out, and I guess it was probably after Scream 2 or during the filming of Scream 2, he sat me down and said, you know, I know she likes you a lot. She should really uh, do what it takes. Get serious. Get focused. I said a few things to, to both of them that they should look very carefully at this and seriously at it, because it looked to me from an, as an outsider like it was something really special. <clears throat> and maybe they listen a little, I don't know. I needed a place to stay, and she said she liked having me around. Why? She says I make her feel safe. She says I'm her rock. Her rock? Yeah. 
if you weren't so concerned with pretensions and appearances, you'd be able to appreciate the positivity and emotional centeredness I provide. Coming up.